Welcome to Lights in the City. I'm your host, Raya Wooten, and we are here at the National Civil Rights Museum Freedom Awards 2016 edition. We are going to get exclusive interviews from some of the honorees for this event. Stay tuned, and we hope you enjoy this show. Now, with um, you being a WNBA awarded, highly awarded, highly regarded player, and um, with everything moving far as women uh, in politically, economically, in the corporate world, how do you see um, you using your platform with all the guards that you do have uh, to continue to strive for greatness for women? Well, it's been a blessing to use my platform on the court, but now that I am transitioning into the next phase of life in regards to television and broadcasting and in corporate America, I'll continue to use that platform. I think that each and every individual, doesn't matter how big or how small, if you have a platform, you can use it, whether that's locally with your church, whether that's at school. I think if you believe in all humanity and all of us having the, the right, the civil rights that we talk about, then you should use whatever platform that you have, and that's what I'll continue to do. And you also, I know that you have recently retired from WNBA, and um, what do you plan to do now as far as with the youth? I know you have a lot of hands in that, and uh, you also have a lot of positives towards uh, the African American community, towards the Black Lives Matter movement. How do you plan to use your time now that you are retired? Uh, I always say work-life balance is really important, so for me, I'm figuring out the balance. Uh, my husband and I are excited to think about a family and think about the potential for that. But at the end of the day, I'll make sure I balance everything out and I can continue to push the agenda forward and hopefully make our communities and, and our youth um, lives a lot better. Thank you so Thank you much. So much. <laughs> Now, I know that you won the Nobel Peace Prize, and you're actually one of the youngest to ever win that award. How does that make you feel to know that um, your work towards justice and towards civil rights is um, awarded? I'm so proud to uh, win Nobel Peace Prize and also to win Freedom Prize. That means a lot for me, and that means a lot for people who are in my country and in all over the Arab Spring countries who are struggling and sacrificing for having a new life and new countries that is you know with freedom and uh, and uh, dignity and uh, prosperity and democracy and peace so this is this is recognition from the world of our struggle of our of my struggle myself and the struggle of women the struggle of youth the struggle of all the people who are now until the under the violence of the dictatorism and also terrorism yeah so how do you um, plan to work towards fighting those struggles that women go through, that people from your country go through. How do you plan to use your platform to fight towards those struggles? I said, how do you plan to use your platform to fight towards those struggles that you speak of? The yeah, we, well, uh, the, the most important thing that we use, which is the peaceful method, method, which is using first, you know, using our rights, the expression rights, through the uh, newspapers, through the um, uh, uh, you know, uh, sittings and demonstrations, and that was very tough to the ousted regimes that you know that you we use this right and we didn't ask the permission from them to give us so that was the most important thing that we use as a peaceful method and carrying uh, uh, flowers uh, in front of all the violence that uh, he's you know uh, making against us um, didn't replay any violence by non by violence we just use the non-violence as the only way so that was that gave us a big courage and also that gave us uh, you know gave us the chance to win in the first step of the of the revolution now we are uh, we are suffering from counter revolution but as we went in the first step we will win in the second step this is the, you know, the rule of history of the revolution everywhere 
every great revolution followed by counter revolution, but at the end, people win. Thank you. I'm standing here with Anthony Brown, who is covering the event. He will be performing his song, Worth. He's a gospel artist. How are you doing, Anthony? I'm doing amazing. Very grateful to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming, and thank you for um, performing for us tonight. So what can, what is, tell me about this song, Worth. What can we expect from this song? Man, you know, it's been a song I've been singing all year long. Um, it's just, it's done great, um, and people have connected with it. It took me to the Grammys, took me to the Stellars. Uh, just left the Devil Awards last week and won two Devil Awards and we performed it there as well on TBN. And so when I got the call to do it here, I thought it was just so befitting since this is the Freedom Awards um, and the song talks about knowing one's value and knowing one's worth and I think it just kind of all fits together. So I'm grateful to be here to do it tonight. So with that being said, you said the song talks about knowing one's value and knowing one's worth. You said you wrote the lyrics for it. What part of your life um, did this song help you through? Like, how does it help you? Well, you know what? God gave me this song in the middle of a point where I was very depressed. You know how you can look to the left and the right, you can compare yourself to other people. And um, I've always heard the comparison is the thief of joy. If you start looking at how you fare up with other people, it's just a very bad thing. It's better to know that the creator, God who created you, made you perfect in his image, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And if you know who gives you your value, then you'll never second guess it. I completely agree with you. Um, what are you doing, working on right now? I heard you say that you have a project that's coming out, so tell me a little bit about that. Well, no, I just, this project, the Worth project has been out for a while, but um, yesterday I just announced the tour we're doing with Live Nation with myself and Jonathan McReynolds and Travis Green. We're coming together next tw uh, for 2017, touring um, venues all across the country. And then I will do another project next July, a new project coming out that I can't tell you about too much yet, but it's on the way. I have one more question sure. for you. With you being a man of God, a man that's diligent in his work, that um, focuses on God's vision and God's plan for your life, how do you stay grounded? Because we have so many people that, that struggle you know, between flesh and faith and between spirit and, and truth. How Absolutely. do you stay grounded? Well, you know what? That is what keeps you grounded, is just knowing that any great thing that happens really is because of the God that allows it to happen. It's like David, you know, that God would use David in the Bible to, you know, kill Goliath and slay lions and tigers and bears. But whenever he would finish, he went back to the pastor to do what he was called to do, which was to serve the sheep. And so for me, that's what keeps me balanced. Anything that happens good in my life, I'm aware that God just used me to kill a giant. But really my job is to be back in the pasture with the sheep. Thank you so much. And we are looking forward to hearing words. How do we get in contact with you? How do we check you out and see your latest stuff? Yeah, it's all social media, right? So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, it's all AJB Live, AJB L I V E, or on my website, AJBLive.com. Make sure you check him out and also that project worth. And thank you so much for interviewing me. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. I am standing here with Mrs. O'Brien. How are you doing? Hey, I'm great. How are you? I am good. You look great. Which one do you have on today? Thank you. I don't remember who made this dress for me, but um, a designer who kind of fit it to me, which is nice because it means it actually stays on in all the critical places. You look very nice. Thank you. Now, I know that you cover a lot of racial, a lot of social issue documented stories. Why is that such a passion for you? I think it's really important to the fabric of America. I think, especially in media, we often like to tell stories and just leave entire populations out or tell their story but without including their voice. You know, we'll tell it for them. And I think it's really, really critical that everybody gets to tell their own story and that it's all part of the American fabric, that some people's stories aren't more valuable than others and, and don't need to be elevated higher than others, that we all have a story to tell. So I, I, think, it's just, I think it's just really critical. Now, you are a very successful woman in the, the media business. How do you see women moving forward with everything that we're, we're pushing for right now? Equal pay, uh, equal rights in corporate, in, in economics, and political. How do you see us moving forward? Listen, I will say in the 30 years now that I've been in this business, there have been more and more opportunities for young women. And I think that's great. I don't think we're there yet. I think we probably have a bit of a ways to go. I think young women like yourself are going to have to pick up the baton from people like me and continue to argue and fight and push for the opportunities that you want, especially women of color. So I don't think it's a, it's sort of like a metaphor to the civil rights movement. It kind of never ends. You know, there's no point where we just say, oh, we're done. Oh, it's good. Justice for all. We're done. <laughs> we're out. <laughs> it really is just constantly making sure that you're keeping on top of it and you're, you're, you're moving the right direction. 
Right. I'm going to touch on that constantly, making sure we're keeping on top of it. Uh, right now, we see a lot of things that are happening towards our minorities, not even just the African American community. Um, there's Latino communities. It's and been kind of a crazy election. Right. For with Muslims, for Latinos. Most definitely. Yeah. So, uh, but again, I think it's always about not just seeking justice for your own community. You can't really viably argue for something unless you want to see justice for everyone, right? I mean, it's, it's not just for me and mine, it's for us, justice for all of us. And I think if we keep our eye on that, then we become much better and much more uh, valid representatives of the message. Right. Thank you so much for being an advocate, and I uh, hope you enjoy the event. Thank you, thank you very much. This was Riley, and we would love to have you as a guest on Lights in the City. If you're a business owner, have an organization, or have upcoming events, we would love to hear your story. Go to l3television.com for more details. What's going on? I'm Janika Bates. You're tuned into an all new episode of Lights in the City. You know, we always come to you guys with special guests who are doing great things in the community. And today's show is no different. I have Miss LaShondra Robinson. She is the CEO, founder and executive director, director. of UCAN of Memphis. How are you doing, Miss LaShondra? I'm wonderful. Thank you. Good. So please tell me. What exactly is You Can of Memphis? So You Can of Memphis is basically a mentoring organization for middle and high school students. Our priority is making sure that students and parents as well as teachers are aware about bullying. And then also, how can we help our students be more prepared for the workforce development? Okay, and so how do you guys do that? Do you have um, activities outside the school or inside the school or you... Do you go to schools or what all do you do? We do a lot of a lot of things, a combination of all of that. So we actually go to the schools and we talk about bullying. Considering that October was Bully Awareness Month, we actually had about five assemblies. We did two conferences and one workshop, and we talked about what is bullying. How can you notice the signs of being bullied? And then also, how can you prevent yourself being a bully? So it was very interesting. So tell me, what kind of feedback do you get from those kids? Because I know it's middle schools, right? Middle schools. Mm -hmm. Middle school kids are, you know, that's yeah. the learning age. So yes, how it is. is it being with those middle school kids and teaching them not to be a bully? Well, it's amazing to hear some of their stories because they go back to their childhood. One of the things that I always ask is, who all has been a bully? And of course, I raise my hand. Mm -hmm. Then I say, who, who all has been bullied? And I, I raise my hand as well. And so they'll go back to saying, well, my brother bullied me and that's why I was a bully or better yet, I was a bully at once and now I've been, I'm being bullied or vice versa. And so we had the opportunity to talk to one of the students at the SES Suicide Rally Prevention and we asked her, why did she become a bully? And she said she was tired of being bullied. Mm -hmm. And in return, she wanted that same power. When you talk about bullying, they're thinking about strictly on power. So we have to teach them how to use their power in a different way. Because as a bully, believe it or not, you are a leader because people follow you. Mm -hmm. And if they're going to follow you for the negative way, let's change the power of good and put into it a positive perspective. Okay. And I thought you said you raise your hand when you ask <laughs> <laughs> who's been a bully. <laughs> you were a bully. Well, see, as an adult, and we forget that adults actually bully their kids. And I had to really just let them know the truth. Because 
students can tell if you're lying or not. So I had to be transparent in order to gain their trust. So I explained to them that, yes, at one point I was a bully to my kids. I know. Don't shake your head like that. (laughs) And because of that, they actually sat down and had a discussion with me and how I was bullying them. And I didn't consider myself being bullied because I'm a parent. I'm a mom. You do what I say. That's all it is to it. Mm -hmm. But we can say some mean things to our kids. And unfortunately, those particular those particular sayings can actually go into their child's life. And then when they go to school, they feel what you have already told them. So when someone else says something to them, they just go along with it. And then in return, either they can be a bully or they can be a victim of it. So is that where the concept of you can's bullying um platform came from from you being a bully yourself well actually no so about four years ago um, my brother committed suicide and in the fact of him committing suicide one of the things that he wanted us to be aware of was mental health and so I took that information um, knowing what actually happened while he was in school because of who he was and what he did and then also our own personal lifestyles and and life itself with our parents I knew there were some things that he actually encountered and only I knew because he was quiet about it and I never stood up because I thought that okay that's not what we do you know you're strong you'll be okay you're a boy suck it up you'll be all right but evidently that wasn't the case and so when you're looking for love in so many different ways because you're not getting the love that you really want from home then it affects you. So because of the things that happened in his life in the letter that he left me is explaining to me that he was depressed since middle school, I took that and I said, okay, what can we do? Now, don't get me wrong. It wasn't immediate because I actually kind of held back on everything for about a year because I couldn't handle it. I didn't know what to do until one day I just prayed and I said, you know, you're going to have to release this from me and tell me what do I need to do to help make your awareness more um, available for other people. And so at that point, it was like, we need to talk about bullying. Now, he wasn't so much as being bullied, but that mental awareness, that mental health piece of it is something that a lot of kids go through when you're talking about being bullied or being a victim of it. So if we can just bring awareness of that and let people know that if you have been bullied or even with the social competence of it, you need to get help. And that was one thing that he made me promise is to let people know to get help. Don't hold back. Don't say what you can't do. Just make sure that you get help. And that's what I'm doing. That is so good. So tell me about some of the schools that you go to. What schools do you go to and what community centers do you go to to offer your help? So we go to any schools that actually call us. Uh, (laughs) We're basically out of North Memphis area. So we have adopted Douglas um, K-8 school. We also work with the Humes Preparatory Academy. And also we're in Lucy E. Campbell, which is an elementary school. That's good. Now I'm going to tell you about these elementary students. These (laughs) elementary students, they are funny, but they're so real. I had the opportunity to do one assembly there in Lucy. And it was just amazing because I'm always dramatic with with my presentation Mm -hmm. because I want to be able to get their attention, but also be engaged at the same time. And so at the end of the whole assembly, this one particular girl came up to me and she gave me a hug. And of course, I love, I love hugs. And I was like, hey, y'all, sweet baby girl. And she said, Miss Robinson. I said, yes. And she said, I was bullied before. And I said, you was? What happened? She said, I almost committed suicide. Think about this elementary student coming to you and telling you that she almost committed suicide because she had been bullied. That broke me down. But I had to hold strong. I had to hold my tears because, again, I have to be strong for her. And I said, so what happened? Why didn't you do it? I'm glad that you didn't do it. And she said her brother or actually her uncle was the one that saved her life. Her uncle told her that no matter what people say, you have to know who you are and be strong. And from there, she just said, that's what I keep saying to myself. And so that helped me a whole lot to understand how to handle kids, because we often forget about the the trials and tribulations that they go through. As an adult, we always say, oh, you're just kids. This is something you go through in life. But this life is different. It's totally different. If we don't pay attention to our kids now, we're going to lose them. And that's what I'm here for. Thank you so much for, you know, being there for the kids and talking to them, being someone they can go to if they need help. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. What's going on? I'm Janika Bates with Lights in the City, and I'm ready to do an interview. All I'm missing is you. 
Go to L3Television.com for more details. L3 Media is the Miss South's premier videography and photography company. We specialize in capturing all of life's greatest moments. Whenever you need talented and professional service for your special events or business, L3 Media is the company for you. You can contact us at all of our social media sites. You can like us on Facebook, check out our website, follow us on Twitter, or always feel free to email us. We are L3 Media, your number one source for all your videography and photography needs. Give us a call today. Welcome back to Lights in the City. I'm Janika Bates here with LaShondra Robinson, the CEO and Executive Director of UCAN of Memphis. And we were talking about the purpose of UCAN, which is definitely to promote the awareness of bullying and to help kids who are feeling like they want to commit suicide or they have mental illnesses or battling any types of problems like that. UCAN of Memphis is here to help. So I want to talk to you about what do you have coming up in the future for you can any events going on yes yeah, so we have a major event i'm very proud and excited about it on december 3rd we'll be having our first chili cook-off at the memphis may brewer in south cooper area it's right over there where the sign says i love memphis everyone knows where that sign is so we're gonna have our first chili cook-off there so if you know anybody that loves to make chili or think that it's like the bomb chili mm -hmm. maker bring them on because prizes will be done so they're gonna actually make the chili there no. They gotta bring the they chili. They gotta bring the chili there um, to the location, and then the participants or, or the um, the people who's going to be coming in to taste the chili, they have the opportunity to taste unlimited amount of chili. Yeah, and then of course we we'll have beer because of Memphis May Brew. Okay, we we'll have some water there just in case some of the chili is too spicy for you. <laughs> um, but it's going to be a lot of fun, and all of it is for a worthy cause. What we want, what we would like to do, is just to bring awareness, of course, to bullying. And we can't do that without everyone's help. And so in order to do that, we're doing this fundraiser to help raise awareness to bullying so people can know who we are, how we can help and bring us back into their community. Can I taste the chili? Yeah, <laughs> you surely can. Be prepared. Some of them may be spicy. Oh, okay. Yeah. So is it a fee to get in or do we just take donations? There is a fee to get in. So it's $10. A $10 will take you for all unlimited chili. And then, of course, you have the major toppings. We have some cheese, some crackers there as well, mm -hmm. some cornbread, some rice. So you can just put it all in there. Uh, you're going to be full by the time you leave. I like that. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So we're excited about it. Okay, so tell everyone how they can get in touch with you. Let me get your show, social media, you can email address, anything. Yes. So, of course, you can look me up under LaShondra Renee. So, it's not under LaShondra Robinson, but LaShondra Renee. And then also for our website is www, the letter U, C A N of Memphis.org. And then our social media sites is on Twitter and Facebook, also under You Can of Memphis. And then I Email address is you can make a diff without the e at gmail.com. Spell that out for you. The letter U C A N M A K A D I F F at gmail.com. <laughs> okay, I like that. Yes. Thank you so very much. Thank you all for tuning in for this episode of Lights in the City. We'll see you next time. <laughs>